Well, it's time to hang the drywall in our project house. The drywall does a lot besides just make the house look good. It also protects you in case of a fire. If your house ever catches on fire, you need plenty of time for you and your loved ones to get out of the house, and drywall is a great way to slow down a fire. There's a number of different manufacturers that produce drywall, but a lot of people call it sheetrock. Sheetrock is actually like Kleenex. It's a trade name, and the trade name's owned by USG. The interior of drywall is actually made of gypsum. Gypsum is a mineral that they mine out of the ground and it really doesn't burn very well, so it gives you a lot of time to move and get out of the house. Both edges are paper, just so you can get a slick surface. You can finish it any way you want with normal paint, faux finishes, or even hang wallpaper on it. Half inch thick is normally what you find in most homes, on the walls and on the ceilings. Though on the ceilings, you normally have a little bit stronger piece because they're not nailed every 18 inches. They're normally two feet on your ceiling structure. Out around your garage, you're gonna find a little bit different type of drywall. This is actually known as X-rated drywall. Now, X-rated drywall is not the same as X-rated movies. It's a little different. What it does is it slows down a fire. When they test this, when they put this drywall onto studs on a house and try to burn through it, it's going to take one hour to penetrate through there. So if you have a fire starting in a different part of the house, it's going to take a while before it gets to you. And around your garage is probably the most common area to start a fire because you have gasoline out there and lawnmowers and in automobiles. A lot of times you have water heaters out there. So putting the 5 8 inch thick X-rated drywall around the garage is really going to help slow down the fire. And a lot of places it's required by code now and should be used in every home. Got something really different down here called Fibrock by USG. And what's special about it is if you have kids or maybe you pull into your garage a little too far every once in a while and bump it, impact resistant. We tested this in the lab, swung big weights of sand against it, and this is a great drywall to have wherever you might have an impact. Well, when you hang the drywall in your house, the walls go from looking like this to something much more like this, and it's gonna make the whole house feel like it grows. When you walk through a house that's under construction, it doesn't really feel big enough. Once you put the drywall on, every room expands. Remember, when you're picking out your material, you need half inch thick on your ceilings and most of the walls in your house. Go with a 5 8 inch thick, X-rated type drywall around your garage or anywhere else that might catch fire. And if you got kids or a high impact room, go with Fibrock. After our drywall is hung, it's time to tape and bed the drywall. Now tape is just what it's called. It's a piece of tape that you put around any of the joints because we want to cover up the joints. When we look down the wall, we want that wall to be perfectly smooth. We don't want to see any joint on it. And on our corners, we want those smooth as well. So we lay a strip of tape, but then you don't even want to see the edge of that tape. So you bed the tape. Something a little different right here, that's a rounded corner. That's called bull nose. Normally corners come together and they're sharp and square. And then you run your tape on both sides. And you have a piece of steel in the middle that's got a sharp edge on it. A lot of people go into the rounded corners just for looks. It doesn't do anything, it's just looks. Not very expensive to add a bull nose instead of a straight edge. It's a little more work, but not too much work. You can do things like this to really change the look of your walls. And there's a lot of different plaster techniques you can do on the wall as well. Before we get to that though, I wanna show you one thing right above me, and that's an arch. Now the guys did a great job on this. It really has a nice radius to it, but that is hard to build. Your framers gotta do something special. They've gotta frame that in in that shape then your drywall guys have got a hard material. Drywall is like little bits of rock actually ground up, made into a solid surface. So to get that round shape, they've actually got to lay out a piece of drywall and slice it along the back in a number of places and then actually bend it. And you can't bend a solid sheet. That's why they put the cuts in it to allow it to expand. And they've got to form it up there. And then the tape and bed guys got to be good enough to go ahead and fill that in where you don't see a bunch of little lines where it was bent. Now even when you do a great tape and bed job and go for smooth walls, occasionally you can see some imperfections. So most people put texture on the walls. And now this is called orange peel that the guys are putting up now. It's by far and away the most common and most popular. And it does look like the peeling of an orange, except of course it's not orange. You can paint it any color that you like once it's dry. And the best thing about it is it is gonna hide any imperfections in the wall so you're not gonna see joints. Besides orange peel, you can do other things. This one is called skip trowel. And you don't blow the texture on there. What you actually do is you pick up texture with your trowel and just rub it over. And it almost looks like icing on top of a cake. And you can see a lot of little indentations in it. You can see our lines like I'm talking about as far as icing goes. 
Someone ran their fingers through this while it was wet. That's not supposed to be there, but the rest of it is called skip trowel. It's more expensive because there is more handwork to it, but it does give you a different look. Maybe something in a library or a formal room of the house. Here we've got one that's not very expensive, but has a real nice look to it. And this is called a knockdown or a drag down texture. They spray it on just like they do the orange peel, but then they run their trowel over the top of it and just knock the top edges off of it and pull them together a little bit. This one had paint and glaze put over the top of it to give it that reflective look. Really nice, not very expensive to do. The paint technique is, but not the texture itself. Once again, knock down. Here's more of a faux finish look. This is sort of a combination. Spray it on there, put some on their trowel both, rub it across, and get a real different look. Again, a lot of paint work went into this. You can just paint it one color, but if you paint it and glaze it, it really looks sharp. Here we did some stuff with no texture whatsoever. We're gonna be doing a little bit of this in different rooms in the house. This is just plaster. And we actually went up and put the plaster on. And on these samples that the guys did, if you can get right next to it, you can see how smooth it is. It almost looks like glass. There is not a big buildup. You've gotta do a really good tape and bed job because we don't wanna see any imperfections on this because we're keeping the coating so thin. And even though it's thin and smooth, you can see every single line from the trowel in here. Really, really nice effect but very, very expensive. I mean, we're talking a lot of handwork and doing excellent job all the way through. Here they put tape around the edge and they put their plaster on, did again the smooth finish like we had on our brown piece there, but they went ahead and pulled the tape so we had a border all the way around it. If you do something like this or attempt something like this, you've gotta pull the tape while the plaster's still wet. If you wait till it dries and you pull the tape, you're gonna end up with cracks and rough edges all the way around. Now the question always comes up, to get these effects, what's the price gonna be? Well, orange peel or a knockdown technique is something that can be done by your builder or remodeler and it's not very expensive to do. And it is something you can do yourself. As far as the plaster and these mirror thin types, they're very expensive. It takes a lot of man hours. It's not a lot of material, but it is a lot of hard work. I'm sure you've gone through the home magazines and seen some beautiful rooms and wondered, could I ever have a room like that? But before you do the room, do a piece of drywall, paint it the color that you want at the very end, Take it into the room, lean it up against the wall, turn on the lights and see how it's gonna look once it's the finished product in your house. You may surprise yourself. Well, our project house is finally taking shape. We're not at the end yet, but we're getting close. There's still a lot of work going on, but now's the time that we can walk through the house and see what all those details meant back when we were doing the foundation pour and framing the house and putting up the drywall and the molding. Now we can walk through and see how the archways look, the columns, the windows, and see if there's some things that you might wanna do to your own personal house. Let's take a look. Now our bridge that we built that overlooks the family room looks awesome whether you're up on top looking down or you're down below looking up because it looks like it's floating. There's no visible means of support. We've got one load bearing wall back here but nothing on the front side. And then coming out of our entryway, we have this huge open expanse where it looks like there's no support. It's just floating in air. Well, the way we did that is with a glue lamb. A glue lamb is actually a beam that's made out of several studs glued together. And once you glue all of these together, it adds so much strength, it's almost like putting a steel beam up there. That runs along our backside from the corner on our load bearing wall all the way to this load bearing wall that can support that weight. Now, projecting out towards the family room, you can't use a glue lamb, there's nothing to place it on. So we've made basically a lattice work out of these eye joists. Now, eye joists is to replace a stud. You might have built a bridge out of a stud before, or floors out of studs. The problem with them is they warp and they can actually end up making for a squeaky floor. With an eye joist, they're not gonna warp with moisture or humidity changes because it's three different materials glued together. On this one, we've got several layers on the top of our eye joist glued together, several layers on the bottom of our eye joist, and in the middle, we have this oriented strand board, OSB. It's pieces of wood actually glued together and it forms the shape of an eye and that's why it's called an eye joist. When we have a humidity change, this is not gonna flex back and forth between these three different pieces. So it's gonna be good, straight, strong, no squeaks. It can hold a lot of weight. So we use our beam in the back, our glue lamp, and then we used our eye joist projecting out. So now we have a floating bridge. Now part of the architecture design that really sets this house off are our columns and our archways that we built here between our kitchen and breakfast nook and the family room. Now it looks like a lot of work went into it and it really did, it is a lot of work. But it started 
with just columns and a flat level ceiling coming out of our kitchen and nook. We put a glue lamp in all the way across, just like we did on our floating bridge. Well, here we did it to hold up the second floor. Our columns are plaster and really look nice, but they don't support the weight of that second floor. Inside the columns, we really have steel posts that run from the floor straight up, and they support the glue lamp itself. And then we just put the plaster columns around those pieces of steel. Now the archways were something the interior designer wanted to add after we had already built this structure. We came in afterwards and just framed in with extra material the archways themselves. They don't support the weight up top. It's that glue lamb that's in there plus the steel that's inside of these columns that does all of the work. As you can see, it really looks sharp. Let's take a look at these windows. Now one of the really dramatic parts of this family room are these windows. Four feet wide, 18 feet tall. We're gonna let a lot of light in with these three windows, but we had to plan ahead because there's a lot of factors to take into effect to make sure that they're installed properly and we're not gonna have a problem in the future. Number one being the glass. This is some big panes of glass. We couldn't use normal glass. We were fortunate enough that Cardinal Glass worked with Anderson Windows to design a pane that's thicker, but also has a little bit of flex to it because we are gonna be hit with a lot of wind on a window this large, and we need the window to be able to move just a little bit and not crack on us. We also had to do some things with the wall because we're giving up a lot of places where we would have studs. I always recommend that you go with a two by six for an exterior wall. Two by six is five and a half inches thick, and that's normally more than enough. The problem is every 16 inches you should have a stud. We've got four feet here with no studs whatsoever. So we had to beef up to a two by 10. I'll put it here against the jam and you can see much, much thicker. But we needed this extra wood to support all that weight above. We've got a concrete roof on top of this. We can't hold it up with the glass itself. We've got to put the studs in that are strong enough to hold that roof up. Now we did something really special in the master bedroom. Let's go take a look. Now in our bedroom, what we were after was big. We wanted a really big bedroom with its own unique feel. We did part of that with the ceiling. We used eye joists to go ahead and span this big open area so we didn't have a lot of support walls. We also changed up the ceiling finish as well. We've got a big square in here that we popped in, plus a triangle on each side to give it its own unique feel. We did something different over here because there's no second floor above us on this side, so we put in a plaster dome. It looks really nice, it wasn't hard. We had to add just a little bit of wood to brace up for it, but since there's nothing above us, we didn't have to change the roof line or mess with anything like that. One last unique thing that I really like to do in houses is put in a see-through fireplace between the bedroom and the bathroom. It looks great from both rooms. Well, as you can tell, our project house is a big house. and We have a lot of open areas. We have a second floor with extra bedrooms, plus we've got a game room and a study. There's a few things you need to consider when you have a house that's very open, and that's the heating and air conditioning. You don't wanna to pay to heat and cool this whole house to the exact same temperature, and you can't do it to the exact same temperature with these open areas unless you zone the house. Zoning is not very expensive to do. You have separate dampeners and separate controls and sensors in each room of the house. Even though you might only have one or two units, you have different temperatures working throughout the house to make sure that it's comfortable and those utility bills are low. Now I showed you a lot of stuff today, but some of this stuff you can do in your own house if you're building a new home or remodeling your existing home. Remember, it's those little details that really set off the look of the home.